And welcome back to TVS Presents Support Magazine on radio. I'm John Daly. Now, he is definitely one of the most accomplished professional athletes of the 20th century. Not only did he have a great career as a major league pitcher, winning 151 games, but then he topped it off by being a professional golfer and doing quite well there, too, winning the Tahoe Celebrity Event eight times, all while overcoming a childhood bone disease. Joining us now is Rick Roden. Rick, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, John. So you moved to Florida full time now. You still playing lots of golf? Not as much as I used to. I play probably uh, two or three times a week, sometimes more, but not very often. Just play uh, a couple days a week, usually on the weekend and one time during the middle of the week. But uh, I can get out and play when I feel like it. But that's what all I play right now, especially uh, the way things go on in the country right now. Yeah, absolutely. I had Ralph Terry on a couple of weeks ago, and like you, he was an accomplished major league pitcher and then also professional golfer. I I see guys like Greg and Mike Maddox, who I know fairly well, and John Smoltz, who are exceptional golfers. Does pitching make you a better golfer? I don't know if it makes you a better golfer. It seems like most of the uh, baseball players that are good golfers are pitchers. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with, with uh, the mental part of it more than the physical, even though the, the throwing motion, the hips and all do the same thing in that, except, uh, you know, it's, it, the ball's on the ground, so you have the same type hip action when you throw a ball. But um, uh, well, we always like, always say the pitchers are better athletes, but the other guys don't think so. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is it is uh, it helps mentally, I think, being a pitcher because you have to have a short memory. You know, and if uh, once you give up, if you give up a home run, you better get it out of your mind, or there'll be two more guys on base real quick. And golf's the same way. If you have a bad hole or hit a bad shot, you know you got to put it behind you, get it, go on. And that, I think a lot of guys have a hard time doing that. Uh, how how much of a factor would it have been during your pitching career that you had three days off? You could go play golf on your days off, you know, early in the after, early in the morning before the game because you weren't going to pitch that night. Well, you could, but some team, uh, the Yankees, I played for them, and uh, we weren't allowed to play golf, even though, uh, you know, pitchers never batted over there. They had a DH. <laughs> but George thought it messed up your swing. But, uh, yeah, we, we, we could go play quite a bit. I played when I was with the Pirates a lot. I played with the with the uh, pitching coach, Ron Schuler. You know, usually I play, play the day after I pitched and the, and the next day. Uh, just that helped us to get me back loosened up after pitching. Got, got, you know, I'm stiff the next day, next two, day, day or two, and it helped loosen it up. We are talking to Rick Roden, former Major League Baseball pitcher and also a professional golfer. Um, can, can you just talk briefly about how different pitching is today compared to, let's say, about 20 years ago when you were playing? Is, is there a big difference for pitchers? There's a big difference in the whole game. Uh, I have a hard time watching the game now. There's, the players are great. Don't get me wrong. They're, they're great. The biggest difference is size. Uh, there are no weak guys playing baseball anymore, like shortstops they used to be and middle infielders where guys are out there to catch the ball. Now they're out there to hit 20-something home runs, and they're bigger. Uh, when I was with the Dodgers, we I was in the middle of four years I was there. We won, had, the, had the best ERA in baseball all four years. Now just the middle of 11 straight years, they had the best ERA. So I came up with a pitching organization, but the the – the game today is all about power, power pitching, power hitting. Um, you know, you don't see any hit and runs very often. You don't see any sacrifices. You don't see hit behind the runner. It's all about, you know, in, the, in today's game, a strikeout is just an out. So they don't care if it's, if, if it's an out, if it's a strikeout or a ground ball or a fly ball. They just want the guys to keep trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And that's how the game's played. And the pitching is, when I played, they had 10 pitchers on the staff. Now they have 13 which leaves the manager with three players, three less moves he can make hitting wise, but they need all 13 of them now because they don't let any, they don't let the starting pitcher pitch very long. Uh, they're bigger than we were way bigger than we were. They're, they're stronger, probably in better, better physical shape, but I don't know about arm shape. You know, I I did some work in the minor leagues with the Dodgers uh, for a few years, a few years ago. And, you know, I used to tell the kid, you know, but a runner's run pitchers throw the ball you know you need to throw the ball they throw more on the sidelines than they do in the games and i blame it on the ownership uh you know they got so much money involved in these guys now that they try to protect them and, and they think by not pitching as much they'll be protected but 
if you throw 100 innings, 100 pitches in eight innings, is way more, way easier than throwing 100 pitches in four or five innings, which they do today. So, more guys are getting hurt today, I think, than when I played. So, could could you have pitched today? What What do you think would have happened to you if you were playing? I, I think today? pitching would be easier today because it, it, it's all about. You know, you're going to give up more home runs, but they don't. Have, you don't have to worry about holding the guy on base. You don't have to worry about hitting runs. You just have to worry about the guy up at the plate. Uh, you can have full concentration. I think a good pitchers could pitch good at any year. I think good players in any sport would be good in any year. They, they would they would adapt to the year they they come up with. You know, I mean, I there would have been way better weight training now than it was when I played. It was just get into baseball. End of my career, all the teams had Nautilus in, in their clubhouses. But uh, before when I first started, they didn't have that. Uh, lifting weights was taboo. With lifting weights is just part of the program now. And the guys are bigger and stronger, and thus they're throwing the ball harder, I think, too. Rick Roden is our guest. He's a former Major League Baseball player and also a professional golfer. Um, I got so much I want to talk to you about. You're, you're an amazing story when you consider the accomplishments that you, you've done. And as a kid, you suffered from osteomyelitis. Talk about what that is. Uh, it's a bone disease. Uh, I got hurt when I was eight years old. I, I, we had a, bought a uh, flip and slide for my brother's birthday. He's four years older than me. I was eight. Put in the backyard. I don't know if you know what a slip and slide is. It's a piece of plastic about three feet wide and goes about 40 feet. And you hook the hose up at one end and it just shoots water over it. They still have them today. And uh, where we were diving to land on the, to go on the slide right in front of the, the, the plastic was I dug a hole in the ground by landing there. And then there was a pair of rusty scissors in the ground, I guess, was there from when they built the house. And Cut my knee and went right to the hospital, got tetanus shots and everything, but I ran a fever for about three months, and they did an exploratory operation. I had this bone disease called osteomyelitis, and my knee on the side, I hurt my leg. My knee didn't grow right. The other side grew normal, and it made my, my knock knee on that leg. And then uh, when I was 12, I wasn't I think when I was 12, I had, sur- had, had, had to wear a brace from the time I was uh, – Oh, gosh, 8 to, like, 14, but when I was 12, they did an operation on my good leg to show uh, the the, growth areas in your knee where your leg grows from, and they shortened one area to try to balance my legs out because my right knee wasn't growing proper. So I ended up being 6'4", I would have been probably 6'6", so I had to wear a leg brace, like, four or five years. And uh, when I finally got to play organized sports, I was playing, I was, like, when I was 14, but my, I came from an athletic family, and the Little League Baseball Park is about 200 feet from my house, and the junior high was about 200 yards, and they had basketball courts outside and football field, and also the neighborhood kids, we were whatever sports in the season we were playing, so we played year-round sports. Wow. Um, was um... – was was it was it painful during that time, and did you have to give up a lot of sports as a young kid to so you could play later, it, in your later teens? I didn't play any organized sports. I couldn't. I couldn't. You know, I had a, a brace on my leg that, that went down below my foot about uh, two inches, and I had a built-up shoe on my good leg to, uh, to keep the weight off my knee, so the, all the weight would go up to my hip. So I couldn't run with that. So. You know, but I was always, you know, shot basket, threw footballs, threw baseballs. So, and my brother was a good player. He he played college baseball, and uh, my dad played all kinds of sports when he was young. So, uh, I had good coaching. But I mean, I just played because I was a kid. It, it, you know, when I was eight and got hurt, it uh, didn't limit me from playing with the kids and around the block. You know, I just I couldn't play organized. So when I got, I think when I finally got where I could, I probably put more into it than, than that kid, normal kid would. Wow. Wow. It's an amazing story. Great comeback. Um, talk about, um, I, I want to talk about your golf career uh, a little bit too. Um, um, you won the American Century Celebrity Classic eight times. Is that as much fun as it is competitive? Yeah, we, you know, well, to me, what was so good about it was, uh, I think I played in 24 events, 24 or 25 times out there. Um, but what I thought, what I thought was the best thing about it, we got to meet guys that we admired in other sports and entertainment. And because of golf, 
we meet and get to know them and their families and we watch you know doing it for 20 some years at my first year, I, I don't when didn't get invited the first year in 1990 and the second year I played 1991 I got in but we get to see their kids grow up you know doing it 20 something years their kids now have kids so uh it's pretty neat you know you know 99 percent of the guys are great guys it doesn't matter who they are you know they played sports they know how hard it was to play their sports they know it's really how hard it is to play another another sport than your own Wow. Um, now you actually almost won a senior tour event. You know, again, you were playing in the celebrity event. You're playing against celebrities mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You came pretty close. Talk about that event. You almost won. Well, I went to, I got, when I turned 50, I started going to the tour school, trying to get out there. They only have like seven spots, seven spots of the, all you go to, you have to go through two stages to seven, top seven, get to play all year and the next eight get, According to what number they are, gives in some events. But I qualified first one I ever played, and I qualified for a senior U.S. Open um, and got in and missed the cut. And then the next one, I got a sponsor exemption, and I had the lead on the last day until about the 12th hole, and then I three putted three holes in a row, and uh, ended up coming in fifth. I think I had three top tens, but uh, I got hurt the next. Uh, Right about the next year, or that that I got hurt that year just before they got hit by a cement truck from behind and totaled my vehicle, and I ended up having a three herniated disc in my neck, and I kept trying to play for like three years, and just messed up my swing, and I finally got surgery, and after night and, and uh, when I was 54, and uh, the year I got surgery, I went to tour school and won the tour school. And but at that time they didn't have the spot seven spots. All it did was get you to Monday qualifying. But I got in fifteen fifteen events one year. So wow. I, I never was at my best. So ever, ever, ever since that surgery, I you know I won some so I was quite a few celebrity events. But I wasn't as good a player as I was before I got hurt. Wow. At least I, I wow. can go play now. I can go play. I, I don't complain about too much because there's a lot of guys my age who can't play golf anymore, and I I can go play whenever I feel like it. Man, that's great. That that's yeah. that's that's good. That's good to hear. I I never knew about your uh, about that accident and about your neck surgery. Uh, we've got about a minute left here. I because you were one of the great hitting pitchers. Mm -hmm. um, you actually were the first pitcher to be inserted in a lineup as a DH. Um, do you think baseball will eventually completely get rid of uh, pitching and and just go DH, eliminate pitchers hitting at all? Well, I hope not. The, you know, the, it made the it made the leagues different. It meant back when they when I came up, the uh, there was a lot more speed in America in the National League, uh, a lot better defense, a lot more speed. Like the Cardinals, every team had guys that could steal bases. But it looks like it's going that way now, and it wouldn't surprise me if they went to their DH. And it's all about sc uh, scoring runs. And, you know, I always knew I had an advantage if I played against when I played in the National League because I knew I was going to be a better hitter than the other pitcher, and he's going to have to face nine guys and I had to face eight and then that was always you know I worked on that I always was a good hitter growing up so I thought I had an advantage but uh, you know it is what it is you know the, the game is not going to stay the same forever so it seems to be changing now quite a bit all the way around all right a career 239 hitter in the major leagues for a pitcher that's pretty good Rick Roden is a former major league pitcher. He won 151 career wins. He is also a professional golfer on the senior tour and also a big winner on the Celebrity Players Tour, winning the Tahoe event eight times. Hey, Rick, thank you so much for coming on and sharing everything that you have. All right, John. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Hey, boxing fans, tune in to the TVS Boxing Network, 70 years of TV boxing from 1950 to today. All on the TVS Boxing Network. Watch now at tvstvnetworks.com. When we come back, the answer to our trivia question, and would you watch baseball if the pitcher and the catcher were the only players playing defense? What does that mean? Next. Next.